Hi, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Live. I started the live stream a couple minutes early because it is windy and uh, just wanted to check the sound and the wind and the wind noise and get some feedback in case there are any issues. I could turn my back, um, but I wanted to get this beautiful shot of the tidal linkage behind me for today's program. So if there's anyone out there, Mark, hi Mark, how's the sound? So we have some of our uh, small audience right now and, uh, and some of our, our fans <laughs> like Mark, our friends, and I'd really like to check the sound because it is windy. The helicopters are flying and um, although the water looks pretty glassy, there's some wind up here. Sounds good to you. Okay, great. I didn't want to, you know, dive into this program with um, uh, with the sound uh, being an issue. Okay, thanks, Anne. I really appreciate it. I know there's always a little delay. So uh, let's see. I don't want to start too early in case anybody, uh, we've got a couple minutes. So just real quick, I'm standing here on the edge of the tidal linkage here at the Tijuana Estuary. And you can see uh, that it is a little bit of a gray day. There's some blue sky up there, but uh, it's a little bit of a gray day, uh, windy, and um, a high tide, or it was a high tide this morning. And uh, I'm standing out here in hopes <laughs> that we might see today's uh, um, uh, highlighted species for Lunchtime Live. Hi, Donna. Thanks for saying hello. Glad, to, glad you could make it. Good to see you, as always. So we have a small audience this morning, this after morning, noon, afternoon, whatever it is, high noon, uh, and hopefully that will grow. If you are watching this later uh, as the recording, uh, that we love that too. And you can always chime in with questions and comments related to today's subject for Lunchtime Live, and we'll go back and, and answer those. So my name is Maria and uh, I'm uh, here at the Tijuana River National Estuarine Research Reserve, or Tijuana Estuary for short, uh, bringing you today's Lunchtime Live, which has uh, going on, getting close to almost two years. Um, and um, we've moved this to every other Tuesday uh, beginning this year because we've covered quite a bit. So go back, check out the recordings of what we've done, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue this, but uh, there are other things going on, so, um, but we're keeping, we're, we're, we're staying dedicated to this program. So with that, the official start at noon. Hi everyone, my name is Maria. I'm here for Lunchtime Live. Uh, welcome to the uh, live stream. And uh, it is here on the edge, taking place here on the edge of this tidal linkage just outside the visitor center at the Tijuana Estuary and hoping that today's subject, the American Widgeon, might join us. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago when, uh, when, we, when we highlighted uh, the western grebe, we had a nice high tide as well. And although there were other birds, and there are some other birds here, uh, our spotlighted bird isn't with us. But today, I want to uh, bring to you the American Widgeon. Um, and if uh, you're like me, when I hear the word American Widgeon, I can't help but think of a classic song. Uh, <laughs> where the word is not widgeon. <laughs> uh, I don't want to give you that that uh, that ear, what is it called, a, a, a worm ear? Um, American widgeon. <laughs> anyway, that's what plays in my head. So anyway, the American widgeon. Uh, this is a, a member, uh, you know, of the waterfowl. This is a, a, a medium size uh, duck. Uh, maybe you recognize that. Um, <clears throat> I found all over North America. I mean, this is a very, uh, fairly abundant, common, uh, yet colorful in the male uh, species of duck uh, found throughout North America. And uh, they are migratory, and so when we see them uh, is, is now, and actually we've been, they've been here for a few months now. They're our fall and winter uh, migratory species, one of. And uh, 
Uh, I haven't seen one today, but I did get out last week and they are, they are around, um, not just in, in the estuary, but in uh, lakes and ponds and, and streams and, and, and fresh water as well. So maybe this bird looks familiar to you. So you can see this is the male. Uh, it gets like maybe 16 to 24 inches long with a wingspan of about 33 inches. All right, so we, we, they consider a medium size duck um, with a relatively short neck, although maybe here it doesn't really look like that. And it's got, you know, kind of a round head and you see that white belly and kind of a, a, a white, what do they call it? shoulder patch. Um, but Mark says the bay is chock full of widgeons. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And when you see them, they are in groups. This isn't usually like a solitary species. They are in groups. Uh, when they migrate, they migrate in large flocks, especially I think in the fall and in, in the spring, it's typically smaller. But, but this is, <laughs> this is, these are some of my favorite parts of, of, the, of, the, of the male especially, but we'll look at the female. That bluish gray beak. Uh, I don't know if you can, if the camera really picks up the color there, but it really is. Uh, I got that kind of pale blue with the black tip. Um, this beautiful green eye spot or patch. And then on the male, this white patch uh, on the head, giving it that, uh, I guess, sort of a bald appearance. So they're known as bald pate. <laughs> this was new to me, but um, seems like it's a fairly common uh, reference to the male, the, the drake, uh, American widgeon, a bald pate. So now when you look at one, you may think, oh gosh, look, it's, it has no hair. <laughs> um, so you can see that and then, you know, the dark, almost like a straight line there, very distinct pattern to this very uh, fairly common species. Now the female, uh, she's not so colorful. She's more brown, maybe a little rusty or cinnamon color. Uh, and then her head but uh, has this kind of dark brown smudge, as they say, over the eye. And but look, I've got the recycled paper here. She's got that blue beak as well with the black tip. So that's what they have in common. The male and the female is that beak. And they get often seen together. So this is again migratory species. We see them in the fall winter, which is not their, their breeding territory. They're breeding up northern, um, uh, you know, the northern part of the US maybe, Canada and Alaska in the spring and summer. Now you may hear them because uh, maybe Mark, you can attest to this. I, like, I'm not a, a, a huge uh, avid birder, but apparently they're very vocal and they have this whistling sound that I guess is fairly distinct. And um, maybe the, the females may do more of a quack, but uh, the male may have like a, a three note whistle. Uh, so good noise to be, I guess they tend to be very vocal. So in large flocks, on these bays, estuaries, lakes, ponds uh, and very vocal. Now these, this is a vegetarian. They are a dabbling duck, not a diving duck. So their feet are uh, a little more in their body because they're, they're not, they are not, they don't not, they're not so far in the back with it, which is needed for like propulsion, but um, they uh, kind of, you know, do that tip over uh, and are pulling up Let's see, sorry, I see Jose is saying hi from Tombstone, Arizona. Hi Jose, thanks for joining us. So they are um, pulling up uh, plant material, aquatic vegetation, um, and they will also feed on, on grasses and, and fields. Um, and apparently they eat more plants than any other duck. And I think that uh, has something to do with their, <coughs> excuse me, the shape of their beak and the size of their beak has, um, has there's an advantage uh, to being able to pull out um, <clears throat> vegetation a lot more easily. So I guess they're pretty, pretty hungry. Um, so they eat more plants than other dabbling ducks. They, um, 
um, they will steal. <laughs> Even though they're, I guess, really good at pulling out, uh, pulling out grasses, they will steal food from other ducks, other birds, um, uh, uh, and especially uh, coots. And we did a program on coots. Oh, I guess over a year ago, but um, they hang out with coots. They hang out with mallards. We did the mallard a few weeks ago or a month ago and um, gadwalls. So those are kind of some of their their buddies that they hang out with. Um, but um, they will, the, they will in the breeding season, especially the females, they will eat insects and uh, so they can get some extra protein. For, for egg laying, so for the eggs, that the eggs are um, um, s strong. Um, and they will eat uh, uh, around the clock, day or night, I guess if they're feeling a little threatened, uh, they tend to be a little more active um, in, the, in the evening and at night after dark. Now, um, like I said, we don't see them in the breeding season, but, but if you were to see them in the breeding season, season there is a kind of a courtship where the males get a little aggressive I guess they get extra vocal and they're whistling quite a bit uh, shaking tails and puffing up their bodies uh, in order to to get together uh, and the male and the female will um, I, I don't believe would know I think it's the female that builds the nest but the nest is really um, depressions in the dirt uh, lined with grasses and maybe some feathers and often pretty far away from the water's edge. Anywhere from like, I guess, 40 to 1,000 feet. So, it, you know, these, these nests are on dry land. And um, they will nest later than other dabbling ducks. For some reason, they nest a little later into, the, into that season. And um, they'll, uh, as they continue to lay eggs and incubate those eggs, they will continue to add nesting material. The nest is about eight inches across, so not too big. And the female, I'm sorry, if anyone has any questions, I just uh, feel free to chime in. We can have a conversation here. Uh, as I, you're just reading off these uh, facts of, of, of this very, actually very interesting. I've, I've always liked American widgeons, because they, they're, especially the male. They're very striking to me, but I didn't really know that much about them. But the female will lay anywhere between three and 13 eggs. It's quite a lot of eggs. Um, so uh, if she does all 13. And uh, she, uh, they will incubate those. She will incubate those for um, uh, not sure how long, um, but uh, once they hatch, um, they will remain in the nest uh, for about 45 days. So they're born uh, precocial, so they're kind of up and about, but they remain in the nest. Now, this is again up in the, up in the north for the, in the breeding area. But um, the males, when, when, they're, when the female is, is, when the eggs have hatched and, and, the, and the chicks are being uh, reared, the male will take off and go up north um, to some lakes where it will spend 35 days without flying in order to molt its breeding feathers for its wintering feathers. So before it makes the big journey south from Alaska down to maybe the Tijuana Estuary or San Diego Bay or even further south, uh, it will molt those feathers for 35 days uh, and it won't fly. So, so the males and I guess the juveniles um, and any females that didn't nest that year will head north to do that. The, the, the females and the chicks will do that molting in the breeding area, in the nest. Uh, and then for also, I believe the same amount of time, uh, and then they begin that journey south for their winter migration. So, Pretty interesting. Um, they will live, I guess, 21 years. Wow, it's a long time. Uh, if uh, they're successful uh, through year after year and into that long journey that they have to make. Now, um, their species, I said, they're you know relatively common. Uh, however, there 
has been a, a, a population loss uh, over time, about 2% a year, so um, which adds up, which adds up, but there's still not too much of a species of concern um, uh, as of now, or, uh, but there has been a 2% loss um, annually on average of the species. So here we have the, the male, American Wigeon, such a beautiful, such a beautiful bird. How many of you have seen these before? I know Mark says they're quite a bit on the bay. And then the female. And really without that blue beak with the black tip and maybe that smudge, um, eh, not a lot to identify her. Uh, but the male. Oh, are they considered a game bird? Like something, I don't think so. I don't think so. Although maybe, well, I know they, um, you know, that's a really good question because I did read something that in hunting season, if they're in areas of hunting season, is when they're more weary, and and um, and that's when they tend to be more active at night. Uh, I guess to avoid hunters. So maybe so. Good question, Donna. Nice question. Um, anyone else? And so I hope they may be starting to head back. Like I said, I saw some last week here on a, on a high tide. I was out walking some trails a bit south of here and, and, saw, and saw them and um, there, let's see, let's see. Uh, but um, you know, I, I, I would imagine that fairly soon in the next month or so, they'll start to, to head back uh, to their breeding grounds. Um, any other news to share? Wow, that's a good question. Actually, um, let's see. We uh, are continuing this. We've had some volunteer events, actually, uh, uh, one last weekend at Silver Strand. So these in-person events are coming back. We have another one this weekend at Borderfield. So if you want to get out and, and protect habitat, and, and I don't even know the details of it, but um, there are some uh, weekend events happening to get your hands dirty. This Saturday, we are participating in Love Your Wetlands Day. This is taking place at Kendall Frost uh, Marsh in Mission Bay uh, near um, uh, the North End, uh, Pacific Beach end of that. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, so that's something you can come to. We're going to have a booth there and you can come see us. Mark is asking, is there anything on my finger? Well, <laughs> way to put me on the spot. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I, I just I got engaged recently. So that's pretty exciting news. But I'm not, you know, I'm still here. I'm not moving anywhere. Um, I'm still here, at, and uh, um, but it is an exciting time in my life. Uh, so thank you for bringing that up. Let's see. Okay, someone's. Uh, thank you. Someone from here is um, is giving putting out the information for uh, this weekend's event. Uh, thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so let's see, I guess that's really it for today. And any other questions, if you're tuning in later, watching the recording, and you have something you want to ask about American Widgeon. <laughs> uh, that song, I had, I looked up the lyrics to that song, they're terrible, they're, they're terrible. But um, no, thank you, Donna. Uh, but I just can't get that out of my head. So um, there you go. Well, happy to, first, February 1st, Tuesday of the month and I've got a Anna's Hummingbird about four feet from me on the other side. Let me see if I can flip the camera. Uh, you could, oh, catch it right there. All right, so one thing. Always exciting out here. So those, those uh, maybe we'll do a lunchtime live on, on, on the hummingbirds because they get really active in the springtime. So anyway, not a whole lot going on here. There are a couple of yellow crown night herons along the water's edge but it's pretty quiet today so anyway thanks for joining us and uh and oh yeah bird walk this sunday um uh, in person so if anyone first sunday of the month at 10 a.m join us for a bird walk maybe you'll see some american widgeons right okay um caught a glimpse oh yeah yeah there's a nice 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 one that's just hanging out here i can hear it here and making its noise so okay well I, I love that interacting with the audience as you can see we haven't done a lot of in-person events so this is always fun i really appreciate your questions and comments and um yes and your walk which is the first second saturday
Saturday. Second Saturday of the month. Uh, Anne is on here. She's one of our, our dedicated docents and she leads a nature walk from 5th and Iris on the second Saturday. Or is it the fourth Saturday, Anne? I don't know. <laughs> I should know. I think it's second Saturday. So i um, leaving at 5th and Iris also at uh, 10 a.m. Correct? So she can chime in with that information. Uh, so come on out and see these things in person. Uh, but also stay tuned for Lunchtime Live. We'll be back in two weeks. Okay? All right, everyone. And if you have any suggestions of species you want uh, highlighted, you know, especially if it's timely, we love it. We love it. Okay? All right, everyone. We'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.